heart. Whoever's coughing. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm gonna jump to my death from here. Okay. That's what Shannon said. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, I just thought. How have you, Roger? You used to be back in the back end. Back in the back end. I just thought I'd shake before I announced. Hey, he's back with Bonnie and her door. She couldn't get dressed. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Roberta Ferguson. I'm the lay leader here at Pea Ridge United Methodist Church. It's such a pleasure to welcome you to worship, whether you're online or here in the sanctuary on this beautiful March Sunday. We do have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a few announcements I'd like to share before we begin our time of worship. Our Lenten lunches continue on Wednesday at noon and we all bring our own lunch but we have a wonderful time of fellowship and in a time of devotion and worship that lasts about 30 minutes so even if you're working or have other obligations you can still come on wednesday and and spend time in uh, devotion and worship and fellowship this church will partner with uh, the village of barbersville and Christ Presbyterian Church and Pea Ridge Baptist Church for a community Easter egg hunt, which will be held on March 30th at 10 a.m. at Barbersville Park. And we need folks to come about nine o'clock to help set up our table. We also need folks to donate gift baskets, which will be given to the children and any donations of gift baskets need to be uh, delivered to the church by Palm Sunday. Might mention also that today is the last day to order uh, an Easter tulip at the cost of $15, and the uh, forms to order forms are in the narthex on a table. The lead team and Reverend Blosser have postponed the safe sanctuary training, which was scheduled for this week, and it'll be postponed until sometime in the fall. And we do hope that uh, you can join with the Holy Week services 
The Maundy Thursday service will be at 6 p.m. and the Good Friday service will be at 7 p.m. We also want to mention uh, that the visitation from Vernon for Vernon Hayes will be Thursday from 11 to 1 at Henson <coughs> Funeral Home with the service at 1 and we certainly extend our symp deepest sympathies to Carol and her family in this loss. And finally, today is Disability Acceptance Sunday, and our communion offering will go to support the ministries of the United Methodist Church to improve the lives of folks in the disability community. And our call to worship this morning was written by Reverend Shannon in honor of Disability Acceptance Sunday. So let us stand and be called to worship. We are all God's children, beloved and created by God to reflect the Lord's image. We celebrate the love and glory of God found in every person. We are all part of God's family and God's family reflects the image of God. We are part of a family of God that embraces our abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. God's family includes every person. We are a collection of people who love God. We are neurologically typical and neurologically divergent. Some are fully abled and some are disabled. Yet we are all part of God's family. Some can move in the world without thinking about access. Some need additional access and help to live in the community. Yet we are all part of God's family. God's family is diverse and divergent. We are all part of God's family. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let us sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, Psalm 110. Thank you. 
as we continue in worship, we do so by affirming our faith to the Lord our God, and we do so through the words of our affirmation of faith of the Apostles' Creed. So my friends, my brothers and sisters, what is it that you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seeth the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the invite our children to come forward for a time of children's moments. you guys today? Good. Good? You know what one of my favorite songs was as a kid? I Can't Dance. I love that song. Maybe some of them though. It's like, I can't walk, I can't dance. Only thing about me is the way that I walk. You know, anyone remember that song? That's like one of my favorites because, you know, I can't my dance. Favorite, What's yours? My favorite song is Twinkle Twinkle. Twinkle Twinkle. That's a good song. I hear it a lot. But you know, but you know, I can't dance, I can barely walk, and I can barely talk. But you know what? None of that matters. You don't know why? Because God loves us no matter what we can do or no matter what we can't do. And so everything that we do, we give to God the glory. Hang on, maybe after church. And so everything we do, we give, do it for God, whether it's to play with our siblings or not able to dance or even just talk. We do everything to give God glory because he's done so much for us. And he's done so many amazing things. Just like you sing so well and dance. Sammy, you run so well and we'll see what I can do well. Now, now, now can I ask you a question? Yes, you may ask me a question. My dad put me in time out. I'm sorry. <laughs> my cousin. Ah. My cousin is called Ma. Ah. So I want you to remember to do everything you can to give God glory, okay? So let's pray. Dear God, Dear God we thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. All right, you guys can go on the children's church. <laughs> I don't think the NASCAR race starts at 3. <laughs> I think we just saw the first lap of the race. <laughs> we you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your love, for your grace, and for your joy amongst us. We thank you for this day to worship with you, and we thank you for how you have gathered us to worship you. Lord, we pray that we may feel your presence today as we worship, as we seek to honor you, as we seek to glorify you. Gather us as your people into this day to worship and to sing your praises. 
to sing your love and to help us to remember that all that we do is to give you honor and glory. Even when sometimes we feel like our words are not enough or our feet are not enough or our actions are not enough, God, you are there. And so may all that we do give you honor and glory today, God. May we give you honor and glory on this day of disability acceptance to remember that we are all your children. Help us to be a place and a community where everyone is welcomed and valued for who they are. Help us to tear down the barriers of injustice and exclusion. Help us to bring forth those who often feel marginalized and feel unaccepted. Help us not to take advantage of people, not to take advantage of access and spaces guaranteed for others. Help us to not look down upon others, but to lift them up into your love. Help us to be your church for those who often feel like the church does not welcome them. Guide us to be your people today, God, in our places of grief, our places of sorrow, and our places of struggle. Help us to be mindful of the journey that we are on in this season of Lent. Renew us, God, in this day of worship. Renew us and help us to be focused on you, Lord. Help our actions, our thoughts to be mindful of you. Be with us in this time of transition. Be with us as we end the season and begin new seasons. May this be a time of healing and hope, God. May this be a time of peace and love. Help us to be yours, God. Help us to be yours. In Christ we pray. Amen. As we continue in our worship now, let us do so through the giving of our tithes and our offering. Lord, we give you thanks for these, your gifts, for the gift of sun, for the gift of life, for the gift of hope. Lord, use these gifts before you to share your hope and love with every person. In Christ we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
before we do our scripture reading, if you've wondered, I'm getting my extra steps in this morning. The reason is, is that we're trying out our new cameras. If you've noticed, our camera is not up here right now. It's because we have three brand new cameras that are mounted up on the wall that they were done on Thursday. The project, we, we ordered it back in October, and it just finally came in. And so we are so thankful for those who contributed to this, and it looks so much nicer, and I've been having fun, like, ooh, toy. Um, my ADHD has been going fun back there, like, ooh, look. Um, but just to make sure that we have someone manning it, I've been, that's why I've been all over the place. So I hope you understand, and I uh, hope everyone that watches us online every week is enjoying what looks like to be more focused of an imagery. So for those of you who are here in person, you just have to go home and watch worship again to see what I'm talking about. But as we gather for worship, I invite you to stand as you're able, as we hear our gospel reading for us this morning. It comes to us from the gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 17 through 23. Hear these words. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud and honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all of these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, Go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your love and for your grace and for your joy amongst us. And Lord, as we enter into this time of deep discipleship and devotion, we ask for you to open our hearts and our minds and our ears so that we may be attentive to you. Turn out the distraction of our day and our lives so that we may hear from you and be willing to go wherever you are leading us. Lord, make me less so that you may be more in this moment. May the words of my heart and the meditation of my voice be pleasing unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I don't know about you, but this has been kind of a fun series for me. One of those series that when you work the exegesis, which means the actual work of looking at the text and wondering what is God having for us in this time and this place, it's been fun to really wrestle with these hard passages. And by fun, I mean kind of the fun and the sarcastic way of my toes have been probably stepped on just as much as your toes have probably been stepped on over these last few weeks. I'm, I'm mindful of my, one of my favorite professors in seminary, a guy by the name of Ellsworth Callis, a great gentle giant of a man, who once said, if it doesn't preach to you, it will never preach to them. And it's a philosophy that I try to maintain. Sometimes I do better at it, sometimes I don't. But it's a philosophy I try to maintain as we go forward. I can't preach something to you unless I'm wrestling with it myself. We're all kind of in this together. And so we've struggled with some really hard things about how to let go of our resentments, how to love people that we just really don't want to love. We've really wrestled with how do we be the church outside our community in this divided time, in this time of deep division and anger? How do we live as followers of Christ in this? What do we need to repent from in this time of Lent? And what do we need to embrace? I've never been one to think that 
In Lent, you go soft. Lent's really that time that has to really get us to wrestle with hard things, and maybe that's why we've been wrestling with hard things. And asking, where is it that we need to repent from? What is it those things that we need to let go of so that we can grow closer to God? And perhaps this sermon will force us to not look outward into our actions within the community, but inward. What is it of me in my discipleship, in my devotional life, that I need to wrestle with? What is it in my life, in my devotional life, that is perhaps keeping me from a deeper life in God's love? That's really the question that we're wrestling with today in this passage from Mark in chapter 10, verse 17 to 23, this passage that we find in each of the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In each of the synoptic gospels, they tell of the story of this man who approaches Jesus with a question of what does it mean or how do we engage this eternal life? How do we earn eternal life? And Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all repeat this phrase from Jesus. This word that he tells this man to do. Go sell your possessions. This man who each of the, does Mark and Matthew and Luke, they each tell us a little bit of something about him. Some say that he is a very rich man. Some say that he's a very rich man who just happens to be a ruler. Some say that he's a young man with a lot of wealth. We don't know how he gained this wealth. That's not for us to probably wrestle with. But the fact that he had so much wealth is perhaps startling for the community that was dealing with so much lack of resources and scarcity of money and food. That to see someone with so much wealth would have been startling, but also to see someone with so much wealth approaching Jesus in humility and wondering, what is it that I need to know? And so this man approaches Jesus as Jesus is on his journey. Mark tells us that Jesus is on a journey, and the journey that Mark is telling us that Jesus is on is the journey that will take him to the cross. He's on the way to Jerusalem, where he will go there to be arrested and betrayed, but, and will also go to the cross to give of himself for my sin and your sin and all of our sins. It's a journey of self-sacrifice, of giving up that which is important in order to gain something for someone else. Jesus is on this journey of surrender and obedience when this rich man, this rich young man, this rich ruler, however we want to define him, approaches Jesus in a sense of an earnest desire to wonder about faith. This man comes yearning to know the deepest question of his heart, and that is, how do I earn eternal life? Eternal life in Mark's gospel is the same as what we hear in Matthew and Luke for the kingdom of God. And so what this man is asking is, how do I engage this life that you keep talking about, this life of promise, this life of hope, this life where we will be with you everlasting, this life where we're called to live for you? How do I earn this? How do I get this? How do I receive this? He comes with an honest question of someone that is yearning to know how to grow closer to God. And Jesus approaches him on that level. He had no choice to engage this man. The man's kneeling at his feet, stopping his journey to Jerusalem. So he had to engage him. But the way he engages him is a way that perhaps you and I often think of what's good. He looks at this man and he says, well, you know the commandments. You know what it means to be good. And immediately, Jesus offers off some of the aspects of what we call the Ten Commandments or the Decalogue. These words that we find in Exodus and Deuteronomy given to, from God to Moses as a way to define the community. 
And the aspects of the Decalogue and the Ten Commandments that Jesus quotes to this man, this rich man, this rich young man, are the commandments and the Ten Commandments that deal with our relationships with one another. You see, there's aspects of the Ten Commandments that deal with our relationship with God. You shall not worship any other God but the Lord, your, Lord our God. Have a Sabbath rest so that you can worship God. Those commandments are entitled for, are there for us to know about our relationship with God. But there are other commandments that are there about how do we live out our relationship with God with one another. And so Jesus quotes them to this man. Honor your mother and father. Don't steal. Don't commit murder. Don't defraud one another. Now, the defraud is a different word than what we often find in the Ten Commandments. There we often find the word of, con of conceit of, or being like jealous of someone else's property. But here we get the word defraud. And we think it's kind of intentional that Jesus uses the word defraud for someone that's this rich, perhaps making the assumption with that word change that this man might have gotten his money from ill gains or wrong gains. But he's asking this man you, to look at what he's done. Kind of like a checklist. At least that's how the, the man responds. And he says, well, I've done all of these things. I've done all of these things since I was a young boy, Jesus. I, I've never killed anybody that I know of. I don't think I've stolen anything. I just talked to my mother and my father yesterday. I don't think I've defrauded anybody. He's looking at this as how to be good like a checklist. I've done these things, so I must be good. I wonder if that's how we engage faith sometimes. That to be good is simply a matter of checking off things off the box. I showed up for worship today, so I get a check. I read my Bible today, or I'm going to read the Bible today, so I get another check. I prayed today, so I get a check. I didn't cuss out the driver that cut me off, so I get another check, maybe two on that one. And we think sometimes to be a good Christian is all about accumulating enough checklists and doing enough of these good things to be seen as good and capable and holy and worshipful. But have you ever wondered if there's something missing in just simply checking off the box? Of simply just showing up, of simply just reading your Bible and, and not asking where's God in this or just praying without really praying for anything more than just God help me to be a millionaire? Guilty. Have we ever really wrestled with is there more to life than just checking off the box? And that's kind of what this rich man is doing with Jesus. He's done all of these things. He's done the worship. He's read the scripture. He's been in the synagogue. He gave his offering. He's done all the good things that you're supposed to do, but yet he's feeling like there is a deep, something missing in his heart, in his life with God. Something's not there. There seems to be something more than just checking off the box. And so we see Jesus kind of respond to this man out of love. In fact, it's the first time and the, probably the only time in the Gospel of Mark that we see Jesus respond with love to somebody. And I think it's because Jesus knew this man approached him with a genuine concern and a genuine desire to grow as a disciple of God, but yet there was something holding him up. Something that he could not let go of to really be a follower of God. And so Jesus says, I, I need you to go set off all your possessions. Give away all of your wealth, give it to the poor and the needy, and then come follow me. What Jesus is perhaps saying in this, in this statement is that he recognized that for this rich man, 
what was preventing him from really worshiping God was that he made his riches and his money an idol. He found his source of comfort. He found his source of strength. He found his source of hope in having money. Having more money than the next person. Having enough money to thrive and being seen as rich and powerful in his community. It was an attractive, powerful vice for this man that he allowed for it to be a God in his life. That which he gave him hope, that which gave him comfort, that which gave him power for the days to come. Jesus was asking him to let go of his desires to see his wealth as being what defined him and being the most important thing in his life. And perhaps Jesus knew that for the only way for that man to do it was for him to let go of everything he had, sell it all off, and to become humbly and utterly dependent upon God. The man couldn't do it. He couldn't let go of, his pow of the power and the joy and the strength and the comfort that having money gave him. And so he walked away. He said no to following God because the power that money had over him was too strong. And we, don't, and we see something that's interesting, that Jesus doesn't go running after him. I think all of us, when we read the passage, we're like, well, Jesus, go get him. Maybe it's okay that he has his money. Maybe it's okay that he has all of this. Maybe it's okay. Just lower the expectations. That way we get more people to show up every week. But Jesus wasn't willing to let go of accountability and relationships and deep trust in order to get him. Because he knew that even if the man started following him, he would still be following his money more than God because the power that money held over him was too strong. It became his God and Jesus could never serve in that place. I wonder what about for us? I wonder where are those places in our lives like the rich man that have too much power over our lives? that we give too much voice and that we give too much wisdom to and perhaps in our lives say that we are utterly dependent upon. Yes, we say we love God and we worship God, but I wonder what are those things in our lives that hold us back from being completely dependent upon God? What are those things that in our lives that maybe we, we are worshiping a little bit more than God. Maybe like the rich man, it's money. Maybe we've made money a God. Maybe the, the acclamation of money, the fact that we have it, we like it because it gives us power and status, that we're seen as good people, people of blessings, and people that God has favored if we have a little bit more money than someone else. Maybe we, we're so dependent upon security of having enough money to live on that it consumes all of our time. And maybe we as a church get so consumed with money that it distracts us from the faith. We get more excited when we have more money in the offering plate than on days when there are little money, less money in the offering plate. And we jump up and down and get excited on those days because we feel like we're doing good. I wonder if we ever ask ourselves, is God happy with us? And is it only when we have money do we feel like God is happy with us? How much power do we let money have over our lives? Maybe it's not just money. Maybe it's our ideologies and our politics. Maybe we allow our politics to consume so much of our time that we've allowed being a conservative or a progressive to be like a God to us? 
Maybe it's our need to be accepted, to have people like us, to be seen as a good person, to be seen as valuable. Maybe it's just to be wanted. But the idea of being wanted consumes us so much that it takes over every aspect of our lives. What's that thing in your life that's consuming you? That's maybe keeping you from worshiping God. I wonder as we approach the table and as we offer a time of communal confession and we enter in that time in private confession that maybe we need to say, God, you know what? I've allowed this thing to be so consuming my life and my time that I don't really give you the focus that I need to. And so, God, I want you to help me to let go of this thing so that I can worship you, to let go of its power over me, to let go of its control over me, so that I can see your blessings and your life at work in my life. Maybe in that time of private prayer and confession that we need to pray that in our lives so that we can experience what God has for us. But then as we come to the table and we've received the bread and the juice, maybe then we can remember that God's grace is there for us and that God desires the, all of us to be transformed and renewed so that we can worship God in our whole self and not just that little bit we feel comfortable giving to God. The rich man could not let go of that power and could not let go of that thing, and it kept him from God. Let us be willing to do something different. To let go of that thing that holds us back from God so that we can truly worship the Lord with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your love, for your grace, and for your joy amongst us. Lord, we thank you for your life. We thank you for your love, but we also thank you that you are there for us, even in those places that we seem to hold back from you. Help us, God, to give our full self to you so that we may be yours always. Through Christ we pray. Amen. As we continue to worship, we do so as we gather around the table in a time of communion, in a time of fellowship, recognizing that God's love brings us to this table. As we do so through our liturgy, I want to remind you that this liturgy is a time of prayer and a time of seeking God. And as we enter into this time of confession, we're going to actually be doing a different confession than what we normally do. Our confession is going to be more of a call and response confession. So I want you to be mindful of that and respond where it says all or people. And so my friends, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Lamb of God, we are burdened. We do not love you as we should. We forget our dependence on you and do not honor you. Instead of glorifying you, we try to bring ourselves glory. Lamb of God, we are burdened. We do not love others as we should. We hurry through our days and miss opportunities to be your hands and feet. We judge quickly and respond thoughtlessly. Lamb of God, we are burdened. We do not love ourselves as we should. We disparage our appearances criticize our best efforts and misuse our bodies. Lamb of God, we are burdened. We are weighed down by the bad things that are done to us. We hold grudges, harbor bad feelings, and believe lies told about us. Lamb of God, we are burdened. We are overwhelmed by sin. God of sorrows, you know our pain and suffering. 
By your words, we are healed. Take our burdens, we pray, and free us from sin. Amen. Let us take some time for personal prayer and reflection. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God and amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast that renewed by your word and sacraments and fervent in prayer and works of justice and mercy, we may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to redeem the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant being born in our likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took him upon himself our sin and death and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On a night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of him. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink of this, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this as often as you are gathered in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as a people of God redeemed by the Lord, let us pray the prayer he taught us to pray as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And trespasses, those who trespass against us. And it's not temptation, deliver us from evil. Now is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's the bread of life, broken for you and for many. Eat this in remembrance of him. It's the cup of grace, poured out for you and for many. 
so that we may have a deeper walk with God in all that we do. This morning, we will take communion by intention. You'll receive the bread, and then we'll invite you to dip in the cup. Afterwards, you can find a place at the altar to pray or, or go back to your pew. We have hand sanitizers in the front of the church and the back of the church for you to use at your convenience. But we want to remind you that this is not my table. This is not P. Ridge and I Methodist Church's table. It's not even I Methodist Church's table. This is God's table. And everyone is welcomed at this table. No matter who they are, no matter anything about them, no matter their abilities or not, God welcomes you to this table. So I'm going to invite those who are assisting me to come forward at this time, and then we will serve everyone after that. My friends, the table is set, the meal prepared. Come, taste and see that our Lord is good.
Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day and for this meal. May it transform our hearts and our lives so that we may live for you always. In Christ we pray. Amen. As we conclude our worship, I invite you to stand as we sing song 402, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. heart. But I want to be a Christian. To be more loving in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, would I want to be a loving in my heart? I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart, would I want to be It was a joy to be with you today as we worship God. As we go forth to go to whatever God has for us on this day and this week, go with this benediction. Go. And remember that God wants all of us. Even that thing that we have a hard time giving up to God. God wants us in that too. So go and give yourself fully to God in all that you do this week. And go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.